All right, a major archaeological discovery tonight. A team of scientists have discovered the remains of an ancient Mayan city. The Yucatan was home to a much bigger and stranger party. This was the domain of the Maya. Let's see T. Cole naked. But oh, now we've bad. done it. Now we see without the trees. This is amazing for Francisco and I because this is an iconic wow. Maya site. We know. For centuries, a secret has laid dormant in the dense canopy of Guatemala's rainforest. The Maya civilization is well known for its sophisticated writing system and profound knowledge of astronomy. How were the Mayans able to build such amazing structures without the aid of modern technology? How did they thrive in the dense rainforest of Guatemala? Join us as we uncover what scientists have just found and in an untouched civilization in Guatemala. The Wonders of Guatemala a significant shift is occurring in the realm of discovery. What escapes the ordinary naked eyes of man becomes more evident under the watchful gaze of a myriad of a more potent eye in the sky. Advancements in the area of technology are revolutionizing archaeology, offering an unprecedented wealth of information previously unattainable. The year 2018 marked a definitive era for the Maya civilization with the Guatemalan landscape unveiling thousands of hitherto unknown ruins of an ingenious combination of satellite imagery and laser scanning technology known as LIDAR. LIDAR has brought forth these hidden structures from the shadows. This is a true marvel amongst our tools and has emerged as a powerful force in Amazonian exploration with its exceptional capacity to peer through the thick forest canopy. It reveals the concealed secrets lying below, operating on the principles of light detection and ranging. LIDAR employs streams of light pulses, emitted from aircraft precisely measuring the time taken for their return after bouncing them off the ground. The result is an intricate reconstruction of the terrain beneath, akin to the marvels of X-ray vision unearthing the lost civilization. The more we explore the mysteries of the Maya Biosphere Reserve, an extraordinary narrative unfolds over 800 square miles. For the very first time, Advanced mapping techniques have unveiled extraordinary feats of engineering that collectively point to a society of remarkable size and sophistication in this ancient landscape. We uncover a network of complex roads, temples, and palaces that would earn admiration from even the engineering minds of today. However, underneath the grandeur and splendor lies a profound enigma. What could have led to the decline of such an amazing civilization? Could have it been wars? Consequences of religious practices like mass sacrifices or prolonged drought? How did the secrets of the Mayan people get uncovered? And how did their culture affect the world? Uncovering the secrets of the Mayans. On a mission to unravel these enigmas, modern archaeologists have turned to the cutting-edge technology of laser mapping. This is a powerful tool that helps to uncover the secrets of the ancient Mayan world. This means decades of labor work, once solely reliant on foot exploration, have all been boosted by the aerial LIDAR. This was what unveiled the forgotten Maya town of Kiwich, deep within the Mexican Yucatan region Circa. In 800 AD, a local king once held sway here, and his legacy stands in the form of an impressive pyramid shrine, constructed from 20,000 meticulously cut and stacked rocks, soaring 30 feet high. Archaeologist George Bay was intrigued by the possibility of hidden royal tombs, he made the daring decision to sink a shaft straight through the heart of the pyramid. Such an artifact, if ever found, could offer exciting insights into the evolution of Mayan society. For three decades, Bay and his team have continued to carefully coax from the earth vivid snapshots of the daily lives of the little-known Maya inhabitants, often referred to as the Northern Maya. Amidst the intense excavation, at a depth of 21 feet, a remarkable discovery emerged. A seemingly unremarkable piece of rubble that to the naked and untrained eye meant nothing, but to the eye of a trained archaeologist means something. The archaeologists recognized its true significance. A vaulted stone, distinctive in its shape with a flat face and angled back meant for insertion into a wall. This unassuming find could be the key to unraveling the mysteries that lie embedded within the ancient walls. These peculiar vault stones were not intended for pyramid construction, but rather they served as structural support for ceilings in buildings. This was the train of thought, at least, 
until they found one of these stones embedded deeply in a pyramid, defying all expectations. As archaeologists dug further beneath the pyramid's base, they stumbled upon something even more extraordinary, the foundation of an ancient structure. This remarkable building stands apart in its novelty, consisting of several tiers in a tapering shape. Surprisingly, the pyramid dating indicates it to be from 800 AD, yet taking a closer look at the pottery fragments confirms the existence of the foundation beneath it, dating back 300 years earlier to 500 AD. Uncovering the mystery of this seemingly impossible timeline, we must journey southward back in time, to the era of 600 BC in Guatemala. In Guatemala, the earliest days of the Mayan civilization took its roots in the fertile lands of the Mirador Basin. The once sprawling jungles witnessed the rise of early kings who constructed monumental cities, propelling the Mayan civilization to the pinnacle of advancement in the Americas. Their mastery of mathematics and astronomy, their development of the first written language in the Western Hemisphere, and their production of awe-inspiring art placed them in a league of their own. However, around 700 AD, the Mayan world experienced a colossal breakdown characterized by political unrest and devastating famine. The once thriving cities were abandoned and the tide of refugees sought refuge by fleeing northward. Amidst this exodus, one refugee king laid down the foundation for a settlement known as Kuwich and soon after commenced the construction of a pyramid, or so we thought. Amid the profound unveiling of an ancient building foundation, a puzzling enigma emerges as the dates fail to align once more. The foundation dated back to 500 AD, and it seems to predate the arrival of the Mayan refugees by at least two centuries. This kind of revelation begs the question, was there already an occupation when the refugees at Kiwik arrived? This is not the only mysterious find to captivate the minds of explorers and archaeologists. Just a mere 17 miles away, another discovery shrouded in secrecy, guarded against looters. Few have been granted the privilege of witnessing this extraordinary revelation, and amongst the lucky few is Fatima, a seasoned archaeologist. Buried deep within the belly of the earth, 230 feet underground at the cavern's base, this treasure awaits adventurous souls. The journey toward it is a daunting task with a narrow single-person passage leading through pitch-black mazes of tunnels. Residents had known about this cave for years, yet the truth about the cave's history remained hidden from them. The moment of revelation arrives for the team, as they venture through the darkened corridors and uncover the remnants of a long-forgotten wall. The Ritual Flames of the Mayans This wall once stood as a divider between two realms, a public space and a sacred chamber. Within the confines of the sacred chamber, a peculiar sight emerges. Traces of countless torches and ritual fires hint at the Mayans' profound beliefs in the caves as the abode of their gods. Envisioning the scared rituals, the archaeologists encounter a curious practice involving intentional deposits of broken pottery. Scholars have theorized that the act of breaking the ceramics released potent energy for their offerings. In this ritual, one piece was always taken, possibly to be buried outside the cave, thus completing the symbolic exchange. With each step deeper into the cavern, the team comes to appreciate the tenacity of the Mayan priests who long ago made ropes to reach this sanctuary. The team, although equipped with modern climbing gear, the journey to the heart of the subterranean sanctuary takes a staggering three hours. On the walls of the caves are breathtaking images, revealing unique three-dimensional jaguars, mythical scenes, and ghost-like jaguars hunting deer. Yet what it is that captures the mid is the portrayal of these creatures dwelling in the underworld, the realm of death. They observe the emaciated body of the jaguar, marked with intent, a possible representation of illness carrying profound significance. Fatima, also a seasoned art enthusiast, who, who, who has explored numerous Mayan caves, could not help but remain the L-bound by unprecedented styles of these murals. They are unmistakably of Mayan origin, yet their distinctiveness suggests a hand not belonging to the Mayan civilization. Scholars have highlighted the stylistic nonces of the paintings 
and the accompanying ceramic offerings, pinpointing their origins to about 100 BC, making them one of the oldest known Maya paintings in Mexico. Important rituals, such as the dedication of major building projects or the enthronement of a new ruler, required a human sacrificial offering. The sacrifice of an enemy king was the most prized offering, and such a sacrifice involved the decapitation of the captive ruler in a ritual reenactment of the decapitation of the Maya maze god by the Maya death gods. In AD 738, the vassal king Kak Tilu Chanyopat of Kirigua captured his overlord, Waxaklajun Uba Kaawil of Copan, and a few days later, he ritually decapitated him. Such royal sacrifices were often recorded in Maya script with the axe event glyph. The decapitation of an enemy king may have been performed as part of a ritual ball game reenacting the victory of the Maya hero twins over the gods of the underworld. Sacrifice by decapitation is depicted in classic period Maya art and sometimes took place after the victim was tortured, being variously beaten, scalped, burnt, or disemboweled as by decapitation is depicted on reliefs at Chichen Itza in two of the ball courts, the Great Ball Court and the Manja's Ball Court. The hero twins myth recounted in the Popol Vuh relates how one of each pair of twins, the hero twins themselves and their father and uncle, was decapitated by their ball game opponents. Heart extractions and sacrifice have been viewed as a supreme religious expression among the ancient Maya. The removal of the still beating heart, or sometimes self-immolation, was considered a great offering and meal for the gods. It began with a dispersal of blood extracted either from the mouth, nose, ears, fingers, or penis, typically with a sharp tool made from animal bone, such as a stingray spine. The victim would then be positioned on a stone or wooden altar, and access to the heart would be achieved with a variety of procedures and techniques. Most of these techniques were proved by examination of the post-mortem injuries on bones surrounding the heart, such as the sternum and ribs. Methods include vertical axial sternotomy, left transverse thoracotomy, transverse bilateral sternothoracotomy, or transdiaphragmatic access. The preferred method was most probably from below the diaphragm, as this allowed for easy access and not much blockage from bones, nicks, segmenting and fracturing of the sternum and ribs after which the heart was exposed to retrieval. If accessed through the sternum, the ribs would be pulled apart, or if via the diaphragm tissue would be cut. The actual removal of the heart was achieved by cutting the attaching ligaments with a bifacial tool. Finally, offer the ing of the heart would take place with either special positioning or through burning. At this time, blood would also be collected from the victim. The ritual will end with the halation of the body, usually through dismemberment or burning. They would then dispose of the body or reutilize it for other purposes. Depending upon the exact ritual, sometimes the four cocks would throw the corpse down the pyramid steps to the courtyard below, where it would be skinned by assistant priests, except for the hands and feet. The Chalan would then remove his ritual attire and dress in the skin of the sacrificial victim before performing a ritual dance that symbolized the rebirth of life. If it was a notably courageous warrior who had been sacrificed, then the corpse would be cut into portions and parts would be eaten by attending warriors and other bystanders. The hands and feet were given to the children who, if they had belonged to a war captive, wore the bones as a trophy. Archaeological investigations indicate that heart sacrifice was practiced as early as the classic period. The Okomtun, 1,000 years hidden researchers from Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, INAH, have discovered the remains of a centuries-old Maya city in the Balamku Ecological Reserve on the Yucatan Peninsula. In a statement, lead archaeologist Ivan Sprach says the settlement probably served as an important regional center during the Maya Classic period, which spanned 250 to 1000 CE. The team named the newly discovered ruins Okomtun, stone column in Yucatec Mayan in honor of the many columns found at the site. The biggest surprise turned out to be the site located on a peninsula of high ground, surrounded by extensive wetlands, Sprachi said in the statement, per Google Translate. Its monumental nucleus covers more than 123 acres and has various large buildings, including several pyramidal structures, 
nearly 50 feet high. Maya builders often centered their cities around pyramids like the ones found in Okomtun, with the structures fulfilling religious purposes. Large, climbable pyramids like those at Uxmal and Chichen Itza were typically used for spiritual training and rituals, including sacrifices, reported Teo Spengler for USA Today in 2018. Others weren't meant to be touched, instead serving as sacred ornaments and convenient landmarks for navigation. The stone cylinders for which Okomtun is named likely formed part of the entrances to upper rooms in the city's buildings. In addition to pyramids and columns, the statement notes that Sprachi's team found ceramics, three plazas, a complex made up of low and elongated structures arranged almost in concentric circles, and a ballgame court. The Mayan Sinsons, the Azd, Ekes, and many other Mesoamerican civilizations played a game that featured balls made from natural rubber. A source of sport and entertainment in ancient Mesoamerica, the ball game also had important symbolic associations, representing agricultural fertility or a battle between day and night. Researchers discovered Okomtun with support from an INAH project that seeks to survey the largely unexplored, jungle-covered center of the Mexican state of Campeche. In March, light detection and ranging LIDAR, scans of the area detected numerous concentrations of pre-Hispanic structures, according to the statement. The aerial images prompted Spraji and his colleagues to take a closer look at a stretch of land larger than Luxembourg, reports Yucatan magazine. Closer to the La Regena River, the team found similar structures, including central altars, perhaps used for communal rituals. Architectural elements suggest Okumtun's decline coincided with the broader collapse of the Maya civilization between 800 and 1000 CE. During that period, Dozens of core urban areas in the lowlands of the Yucatan Peninsula went from bustling cities to abandoned ruins, the stairway to heaven. The city of Copan, what is now western Honduras, served as a political, civil, and religious center of the Mayan civilization for nearly 400 years. Although the site is host to several marvelous ruins, the most striking of them must be the epic stairway in the Temple Pyramid of Structure 26. The temple on which the stairway is built was first constructed very early on in Copan and then subsequently covered over with larger and larger temples for the next 400 years in seven different stages. It contained the tombs of several as yet unidentified persons including a woman who was buried with three heads of decapitated men and a man who was buried with a child that had been sacrificed. This construction, which forms the longest discovered Mayan text, was originally commissioned by the 14th governor of Copan, Kak Joplaj Chan Kaawil, and eventually completed around 755 CE. At nearly 30 meters high and covered in around 2,000 glyphs, the etched pyramidal staircase is not only impressive due to its size and artistry. This collection of symbols offers a rare window into the rich history of the Copan Valley and the culture that ruled it for so many years. Researchers, first stumped by the hieroglyphs, came to realize that the staircase is a record of the royal history of Copan, listing the names of kings, their births, their deaths, and the defining events of their rule. The happy realization that the stones were arranged chronologically was somewhat tempered by the fact that early archaeologists, not 100% clear on Mayan syntax, had liberally rearranged the stone blocks in a 1930s attempt at reconstruction. Only the bottom 15 stairs remain in their original position. However, despite the jumble, modern archaeologists have figured out that the stairs document the rule of 16 kings, beginning with Yaks Kuk Mo at the bottom step and ending with the death of a ruler known as 18 Rabbit at the top. It is also believed that there is special emphasis on the story of the 12th king, Kaak Uti Ha Kaawil whose burial plot was discovered inside the pyramid that supports the staircase, there is surely much left to be discovered in the ancient writings. While we wait for the next breakthrough, the stairway sits where it has been for millennia, but under a new cover for protection from the elements. It was named a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1980. Archaeologist Stephanie Sims was digging at the Escalera Al Cielo site in a hilly region of rural Yucatan, Mexico, when she discovered a trove of clay balls the size of plums, 
There were hundreds of them, buried at the edge of what functioned as a Maya kitchen 1,000 years ago. Ball-shaped artifacts are not uncommon, and Sims likes to joke that male researchers tend to theorize that they are ammunition, while women envision domestic uses. In this case, the location and appearance of the balls, they were found with burn marks in what was presumably a cooking area, indicate that they were used for distributing and prolonging heat in pit ovens. Months later, at the College of Arts and Sciences Laboratory of Microstratigraphy, an analysis of the ball's mineral composition strongly supported Sims's theory. The ancient narrative etched into their material properties suggests that the balls, crafted from the local clay-rich earth, were dried in the hot sun and then cooked like reusable coals again and a gain and again at heat as high as 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Like stones, clay is an efficient retainer of heat, and today the Maya still line pits with stones, build a fire on top, and cook root vegetables or corn. Even before the ball's history of exposure to high heat had been confirmed, Sims extracted residues from cracks in the balls and found traces of starch from maize, beans, and squash, a strong indicator that the balls had been in contact with food. In the lab, Sims used samples of Yucatan clay to recreate the work of the Maya. I cooked the balls in different places at different temperatures and saw these interesting iron depletion patterns, says Sims, who ran the experiment in a closed environment, a furnace, as well as in an open outdoor fire pit. The next step was to enlist the help of Francesco Berna, a CAS adjunct assistant professor of archaeology and an expert in ancient pyrotechnology, as well as a state-of-the-art analytic tool called Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, FTIR. When rocks and clay are exposed to extreme temperatures, their mineral composition changes. FTIR, guided by a microscope, can meticulously graph those changes. With the test balls as a reference, Berna calibrated the thermal behavior of soil from the site, which served as a point of comparison when he analyzed the excavated samples. The most common mineral in the Yucatan soil, kaolinite, survives up to 500 degrees Celsius, 932 degrees Fahrenheit, while smectite and mica survive up to 700 degrees Celsius, 1,292 degrees Fahrenheit. Knowing the concentrations of these minerals and the starting materials, Berna was able to map the ball's histories of heat exposure. He and Sims found that the balls from the site burned at temperatures comparable to the test balls they burned in an open fire pit. Based on the evidence, they outline in the 2013 issue of the Journal of Archaeological Science, Berna and Sims are fairly certain the Maya formed the balls with clay left over from crafting pottery. Kaolin is really good for this purpose, says Berna. It's non-swelling and won't crack, so it's perfect for pottery and ceramics. The researchers also believe that because the grain residue is small and random, the balls probably had little direct contact with food and were used mainly to control the distribution and extend the life of the oven's heat. The balls could also have been used for hot rock boiling, either placed in water or in bean pots, a technique Native Americans still use, but with stones rather than clay. The Water Purifying System More than 2,000 years ago, the Maya built a complex water filtration system out of materials collected miles away. Now, reports Michelle Starr for Science Alert, researchers conducting excavations at the ancient city of Tikal in northern Guatemala have discovered traces of this millennia-old engineering marvel. As detailed in the journal Scientific Reports, the study's authors found that the Maya built the Coriental Reservoir Filtration System as early as 2,185 years ago, not long after the settlement of Tikal began around 300 BC. The system, which relied on crystalline quartz and zeolite, a compound of silicon and aluminum, to create what the researchers call a molecular sieve capable of removing harmful microbes, heavy me, tails, and other pollutants, remained in use until the city's abandonment around 1100. Today, the same minerals are used in modern water filtration systems, What's interesting is this system would still be effective today, and the Maya discovered it more than 2,000 years ago, said lead author Kenneth Barnett Tankersley, an archaeologist at the University of Cincinnati, in a statement. According to Science Alert, archaeologists previously thought that the first use of zeolite for water filtration dated to the early 20th century. 
Researchers have documented other types of water systems, including ones centered on sand, gravel, plants, and cloth, used in Egypt, Greece, and South Asia as early as the 15th century BC. A lot of people look at Native Americans in the Western Hemisphere as not having the same engineering or technological muscle of places like Greece, Rome, India, or China, Tankersley said. But when it comes to water management, the Maya were millennia ahead. Not just the Mayan purification system, but also the Mayan water management system was ahead of its time. The Pyramid at Chichen Itza Twice a year, thousands of visitors crowd into the ancient Maya city of Chichen Itza, located in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, in anticipation of the descent of Kukulkan. They gather around the site's pyramid, called El Castillo, the castle by Spanish conquistadors where, according to legend, Kukulkan, the feathered serpent god, alights from the heavens, blesses his worshippers on earth, and then makes his way to the underworld, or Zibalba. In reality, the setting sun during the spring and fall equinoxes casts a shadow on the northern balustrade of El Castillo that resembles the form of a snake slithering down the stairs, an effect which is heightened by the heads of sculpted beasts at the base. While onlookers observe the phenomenon on the outside, archaeologists have been exploring the inside of the pyramid for nearly a hundred years. Archaeological explorations of El Castillo have revealed not only the rubble or earth from which many Mesoamerican pyramids are built, but also two earlier pyramids and possibly an entrance to hell, or Zibalba. With its pleasing radial symmetry, tidy stepped platforms and crowning temple, El Castillo is one of the most recognizable Mesoamerican pyramids. It was probably built by the Toltec Maya between 1050 and 1300 CE when the rest of the Maya population was dwindling. It's famous not only for the descent of Kukulkan, but also for its relationship to the Maya calendar. Each of the pyramid's four sides has a staircase of 91 steps. The total number of steps, when combined with the temple at its summit, equals 365, the number of days in the Maya solar year. The temple on top was used exclusively by priests who performed sacred rituals at a height that brought them closer to the gods in the sky. Priests ascended one of the four staircases to reach the temple. The pyramid was never meant to be entered. In the 1930s, however, a group of excavators began exploring and discovered that another pyramid temple was nestled within the larger pyramid. Further excavations revealed that it had nine platforms, a single stairway, a temple containing human remains, a jade-studded jaguar throne, and a so-called chakmul. The Chak Mool is a type of Maya sculpture of an abstract male figure reclining and holding a bowl used as a receptacle for sacrifices. Researchers theorize that this pyramid was constructed sometime between 800 and 1000 CE. In the mid 2010s, archaeologists using non-invasive imaging techniques discovered yet another pyramid buried within the two others. They theorize that it was probably built between 550 and 800 CE and may have had a single stairway and an altar. El Castillo is not unusual for having not one but two temple pyramids inside of it. Archaeologists have found earlier structures within several Mesoamerican pyramids. For example, excavations of the Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan, which was constructed by an unnamed ancient culture near Mexico City around 100 CE, found that the pyramid had possibly been built over three earlier structures. Scholars speculate that rulers often constructed over existing buildings as a means of outdoing their predecessors. Interestingly, archaeologists working in the 1970s also found a system of caves and tunnels below the Pyramid of the Sun, which connected to the city's various underground rivers. The discovery suggested a purposeful decision to build on that very spot. Archaeologists made a similar discovery at Chichen Itza in the 2010s. Once again using non-invasive imaging techniques, they found what they believed to be a cenote, or large sinkhole, below the base of El Castillo. The depression is similar to Chichen Itza's Cenote Sagrado, sacred cenote, located at the city's northernmost end. Associated with the cult of the rain gods, called Chaks, it was the site of regular offerings that included such precious objects as jade, gold, and copper, as well as humans. This cenote connects to the numerous underground rivers and caves 
under Chichen Itza's limestone bedrock, a geological formation called a karst. Such underground cavities were not only sources of fresh water for the Maya, but also, according to their beliefs, the entrances to Hibalba, or the place of fright. In 2018, a team of archaeologists began exploring the underground water system beneath Chichen Itza to find a connection to the presumed cenote below El Castillo. If the archaeologists are successful in proving the cenote's existence, El Castillo would then not only have served as a staircase that brought priests closer to the gods of the heavens, but also as a gateway to the demons of the underworld. It would essentially be an axis mundi, the center of the world, uniting the earth with heaven and the underworld. El Castillo thus may have had a more significant role in Maya religion than archaeologists and tourists have previously thought, but such a claim requires further exploration. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another of our interesting videos.